All right, so section 1-9, uh, we're talking about pressure, the pressure in of fluids. Um, so we're saying it's the normal force exerted by a fluid per unit area. So it's a force per unit area. Uh, pressure is a scalar. It doesn't have a, it's not a vector quantity, right? It's just a scalar uh, because it, it has to be perpendicular to the surface. Perpendicular everywhere perpendicular to a surface. So we're going to talk about uh, the pressure of gases and liquids uh, that are pushing on the wall of the tank, the wall of the, um, you know, whatever's holding the water or the fluid um, in. Okay, uh, the units of pressure, uh, it's, remember, it's force over area, force per area, it makes sense it might be Newton's per meter squared. A Newton per meter squared is a Pascal. A right? Newton per meter squared is a Pascal. A kilonewton per meter squared would be a kilopascal. Also, a Newton per millimeter squared would be megapascal. Uh, gotta make sure you know your, your SI units. Um, in English units, whatever the force is, divided by whatever the area is, pounds per square inches. Uh, this is pound, PSI, right? Pounds per square inch. If this was pounds per square foot, it'd be PSF. Um, so generally in um, English units, whatever, the, whatever you have up here, whatever you have down here, you just kind of leave it. PSI, PSF. KSI would be kips per square inch k s i you know that a kip is 1000 pounds i think you hopefully you know that you know it now kip is 1000 pounds okay uh atmospheric pressure of the air right of the atmosphere at sea level is 101.325 kpas right 101.325 kpa or one atmosphere atmosphere is a unit of pressure um, relative to atmospheric pressure, um, and uh, in psi, fourteen point six nine six psi. Okay, the difference between ab absolute pressure and gauge pressure. Absolute pressure is relative to zero. It's it, you know it's relative to zero. There can be n n no um, negative absolute pressure, almost like absolute temperature, uh, but absolute pressure is the actual pressure relative to zero. The gauge pressure is a pressure above or below atmospheric pressure, all right? So if the gauge pressure, if the pressure gauge is 10 uh, kPa, then that means it is at atmospheric pressure plus 10. So that would mean the pressure absolute is 111.325 kPa. Right? So this gauge pressure is um, what a pressure gauge would read. So this, I, I like to think of this is what a pressure gauge or a pressure device would read because uh, it is in the atmosphere, right? It, it measures the pressure difference from atmospheric pressure. So may, maybe we could call this the gauge pressure is the pressure above atmospheric pressure. Whereas the vacuum pressure is the pressure below atmospheric pressure. Or a negative gauge pressure. A negative gauge pressure. Oh, well that's, sorry, that's what it already said right here. Uh, so, for instance, if P vacuum, if the vacuum pressure was, you know, I don't know, 
uh, let's say 30 kPa, then that means it's 101 minus 30 kPa. So the absolute pressure would be whatever that is 71.325 kPa. Okay, uh, this right here is on your formula sheet. Um, we need to kind of look at that uh, conversion sheet that you will be able to use on the test. Okay, so just some definitions right here. We're looking at the pressure, the force per area of a fluid. And be careful, did, did it say absolute pressure or did it say gauge pressure? Absolute's relative to zero, gauge pressure is relative to absolute, re relative to, sorry, relative to local atmospheric pressure. Okay, let's talk about the change in pressure with change in depth. Um, and we're just going to talk about an incompressible fluid. So this is in an incompressible fluid. So I don't know, I think you knew this, hopefully you knew this or it makes sense, that the further you go down in a body of water, right, the more you go under water, the more pressure it has, right? That makes sense. You have more fluid on top of you the further and further you go down. Uh, if you were to look at the pressure on a wall, so if you've got this huge, you know, tank of water, this huge um, aquarium, this huge body of water, and if this wall is holding it, you know, keeping it in, you could imagine if, if you were a, a tiny particle on top of the wall, you'd feel the pressure of that fluid a little bit. But if you were a, a tiny particle on the bottom here, you would feel a lot larger pressure. And so the pressure increases pressure increases, the pressure of a fluid increases with depth, and it does increase linearly. It increases linearly with depth. All right, so this is not uh, parabolic, exponential, or anything. This is increases linearly with depth. Okay. What is the change of pressure with depth? Well, rho g h. Memorize that. Box that in. You, you can have a um, little note card formula sheet on the test. That's going to be on your note card. But I, you may have already known that. You can memorize that. Not too hard. The change in pressure is rho g h. The, let's write that down. The change in pressure... is rho, rho would be the density of your fluid, times gravity, that's the acceleration due to gravity, this would be 9.81 meters per second squared, please don't use just 9.8, go ahead and use 9.81, or 32.2 .2 feet per second squared, um, if we're in English units. And height is, is, is really the, the delta H, the change in depth. Uh, this is in the vertical, so this is in the Y direction. It doesn't matter if it changes in depth I mean, if it changes left or right, it only matters vertical, up, down. It only matters its height. That's why we kind of use an H right there. So the change in pressure is rho g h. So this is what I do. I just add, add rho g h to the original pressure as you go down. As you go down, if you get deeper and deeper under water or under whatever fluid, add rho gh. Make sure your pressure is increasing as you get 
further and further down under the water. Pressure increases at rho GH as you go further and further underwater. And make sure that that makes sense. Make sure you're, you're not subtracting. If you're going down under the water, the pressure is increasing. You're adding rho GH to whatever pressure was above water. So what would happen is you could take the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, or whatever pressure you have up here above water, take whatever pressure one you have up here above water, and if you want to know pressure two, then say, oh, well, to get pressure two, let me take, so equals, let me take pressure one and add rho GH. Right? Easy enough. Add rho GH to the pressure above as you're going below the water. Okay, a few things that will be helpful for us in these problems as we look at calculating the pressure of fluids. Let's look at this. Well, let's say we have some sort of U-tube or something. We have some fluid and the, the pressure over here of the fluid at this height is P1 and maybe kind of I want to know the pressure over here P2 if it's the same height and the only difference is a horizontal change in position pressure at the same height of the same fluid is equal is equal right so P2 is equal to P1 there's no change in height there's no change in height there's also no change in fluid P1 would be equal to P2. All right, so it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter it, that you went down under here and then came back up. It doesn't matter if you went left and right. It only matters the height you start at and the height you finish. If it's the same height, then it's the same pressure of the same fluid. Okay, so when you are uh, going down in the same fluid, you add rho GH. For instance, you can take pressure one and add rho GH and you end up at pressure two, right? You can take pressure one, add rho GH and get to pressure two. What if you started at pressure two? You would subtract rho GH and you would end up at pressure one. You see those equations are, are actually the equivalent. Those equations are the same equation. So if you are going here and then going down, you take pressure one and add rho GH. If you're starting here and going up, you subtract rho GH. Okay. All right, what if you have two different fluids and they're not a mix, right? They are, you got one fluid here that's kind of butted up to another fluid here. The pressure at the interface of two fluids is equal. All right, if they weren't equal, they would be pushing on each other. One would win, you know, against the other, but they're in equilibrium. And so the pressure right here at the bottom of the green fluid would be equal to the pressure right here at the top of the pink fluid. So the pressure at the bottom of the green equals pressure at the top of the pink. All right. It's not equal to the pressure of green up here, top, no, just the pressure at the bottom of the green is equal to the pressure at the top of the pink. So we'll see how we can use that um, to kind of jump from one pressure to another pressure. All right, the pressure change of the gas. So let's say we've got a fluid here, a fluid, a li sorry, liquid here, liquid here, and a gas here. Technically, the pressure change of a gas is still rho GH, but the rho of gases are orders of magnitude smaller, very, very, very small, compared to the rho of liquids. So in this class, we're going to say the pressure change of a gas is negligible. The pressure change of a gas is negligible. Let me spell this. Negligible compared 
to the pressure change of liquids. So you could just say that P1 is approximately equal to P2. Um, you know, you don't have to P1 plus rho GH equals P2 because that rho is very, very small compared to the pressures of the liquids. So you can just jump straight from there to there and just assume it's approximately the same pressure. Alright, so now that we've got the notes, I think we're ready to work some problems.